Hello everyone, I'm Preeti. I'm the registered migration agent with Aussies Perth and today again I'm here discussing the requirements of WA state nomination. Today's session is more of like about the questions and the answers. So I would appreciate all my uh, friends who are watching me uh, over this video. Please put your questions in the comment box. We all also already have received lots of questions from the other clients or the other friends also. And I'll be taking up those questions one by one and I will be explaining them in briefly about what are your requirements and how do we meet those WA state requirements. Um, this WA state nomination was started in uh, October, November 2018 and since then they have changed, changed to one list and their requirements also have changed since then. So I will be talking about the current requirements. The current requirements are that you should have done either the two years of an Australian study irrespective whether that study is the master's or whether that study is just an English language courses. Even if you have done the English language courses, which are the two years and you have done as an on an eligible student visa, then you are uh, required to put that in your expression of interest and you will be eligible for the WA state nomination invitation. Although, uh, since the new changes have come into an effect, there had only been two rounds of an invitation. The one was on in December, in the mid of December, somewhere around 18th, and the second has been on the third, third, fourth, third Tuesday, Friday of the month of uh, January when it was done. And there has been no invitation to the people who have only done the English studies for the whole duration of two years. But as per the WA state requirements, you are eligible. And if you haven't received the invitation based on only done the two years of an WA study as an English, hang on to that because initially the invitations are going up to the people because the uh, the priority of an invitation starts from the first one is the, for the wet courses I'm talking about, the first one is the advanced diploma then comes the diploma and then comes the certificate three, the certificate four, then the three and hence and forth down, you keep going, coming down. And the last priority of an invitation on the grounds of the study is the English. Then the next priority comes about that, uh, how many points do you have? And if you have got the similar points as per your other candidate also who is meeting the criteria of the WA state nomination on the basis of the same qualification which two of you would have done, then it comes on who has lost the EY first. This is the priority of an invitation for the wet courses and uh, to be eligible for this priority of invitation, you, your uh, occupation must be on the WA skills occupation list which uh, which has been changed just in November this year itself, I mean 2019. So for the WA state nomination in the trade courses, they have got few, not many trade occupations are there, but uh, we have got the chef over there, we have got the restaurant manager over there. So these are the very two important occupations including, and then on top of that, we have got an engineering drafts person, and then civil engineering drafts person, electrical engineering drafts person, these are the ones who have been recently invited in the last two rounds for the trade courses that they have done here and uh, then further they have to meet the requirements for the state to accept that invitation right now i'm just talking about what are the requirements through which you can get the invitation after that my second criteria would be what are the steps that's needed to be done to accept that invitation and uh, uh, okay in this one it, the, the most important the, the foremost and the most important thing is when you lodge your expression of interest what have you mentioned in your eo one i have seen a couple of our uh, friends they have lodged their expression of interest they did mention about few of the studies in wa for which they do not they were not able to produce the correct documentation and WA has unfortunately re uh, declined their um, skills assessment, sorry, their state nomination application. So, and this was really disheartening because once you receive the invitation, you are really happy 
and then when it's get declined that means we have to go through the whole process again of lodgement of an EOI and depending upon whether they do meet the criteria of the WA or not. So my friends it is really really important when you are mentioning anything in your EOI because uh, department and if you say that uh, if you have mentioned something let's say that you have mentioned a two, two and a half years of a study and uh, WA has invited you based on those grounds. Now when they have requested if you requested you for the documents, you are providing those documents and in the end for one of the six months of a study you are not able to provide all those documents, everything. There are lots of documents which is required just to prove your study these things. If you are not able to do that but you still meet the requirement with the two years of a study, WA can still decline your application which you have accepted because when you were provided given this uh, invitation maybe somebody else has done a two years of a study because you have done a two and a half years of a study you were given a priority at that point of time and hence you were invited based on those grounds so it could get declined on those uh, grounds itself if you have done your applications or if you have done your studies through an RPL and your RPL or the credit transfers have been mentioned in your transcripts, that's again a very important factor to be considered. Additional documentation is required to satisfy the state uh, government nomination requirements. So make sure you look into your transcripts, you see whether you have got the credit transfers or not, everything is competent or not, because if it's not competent, then there may be a criteria that it is not satisfying the two years of a WA state nomination requirements. The another requirement of this one after accepting the invitation is that whether you have uh, got a six months of an employment contract or six months of, uh, of the work that has been undertaken uh, within Australia. Now, there are a few instances where our, uh, the clients or the candidates have received additional information to show that whether this was an Australian contract or not, whether the work performed for those six months were under the Australian or not. So for those ones, they have been asking the additional documentation to prove and which could be the lease agreements, which could be the business invoices or the proof of the pictures, the emails that you have undertaken while performing those jobs in addition to your pay slips, bank statements, superannuations and all those kind of stuff. The detailed reference letters are also very important where your work undertaken must be as per of the ENSCO guidelines. Another important factor into this one is whether you have mentioned that in your EOI as the skilled experience or not. So what that means is when we are mentioning an EOI and uh, we, when, when we are writing an EOI but we haven't mentioned those experience into those ones or we have mentioned that it was not taken up into the skills experience and later when they ask for it instead of giving them the job offer letter we are giving them on the grounds of the six months of an experience it will be declined. Why uh, so all those people have been asking why you know if I have got a six months of an experience and that's ongoing then I can even provide the job offer letter also so why there is a difference between what is the difference basically between into those two ones. You need to understand that the job offer letter which is required by the WA state government is basically for 35 hours per week and has to be a full time employment. However the employment for the six months can be uh, can also be considered if it is uh, undergone for 20 hours per month so if you are working 20 hours and that's the six months next contract you have it then you should use your six months of an experience rather than going for this full-time job contract for this month and so this was uh, my brief discussion about the wa requirements for the wet education um, where they have done the wet courses within wa Another requirement for the another stream is where you have taken the graduate or the postgraduate qualifications you have done within Western Australia, which is anything uh, above the level of EQF level 6, which is the bachelor's or the postgraduate diploma or the post uh, and, and the master's study. If you have undertaken those ones, again, your occupation needs to be in the WA skills occupation list, and then you can further go ahead to with the requirement of uh, meeting the requirement of giving them the six months employment or six months of a job offer letter. You, 
in any circumstances, whether it is a graduate stream or it is the master's stream, the most important factor you have to give it is the job offer letter or six months of an experience and your EOI must mention into these ones. We have got few of the clients which have come and they have mentioned that uh, I lost my EOI on this, this, this date, but, uh, and my points are more than my friends, why I have not been invited. We looked into your, their EOIs and we found out there is one or the other or the several mistakes in the EOIs where either they have not mentioned about the study in the WA or they have not mentioned one or the other thing into the EOIs and all. They have been lots of, and I'm not talking about the one client or the two clients. Since past, when the December round has gone, which was the first round itself, I can count the number of people who have come with the EOIs and not mentioned the things. They were somewhere around uh, around 50 of them. And in January, they, were, they have been doubled, which has come and seen me. We uh, take a, pointed out the mistakes in the EOI and that has delayed their invitation round because now when you are going to update your EOI, let's say they have come to see me, they have lost their EOIs in December, have come and seen me in February this month. Now when I've told them we are going to update their EOIs, the date of effect of the EOI is again going to change. And the current EOI will not will not be invited. The first one will be invited on the grounds of uh, which who has lost the EOI before you guys. So again, you cannot count your EOI from December because that is not the date of effect. Your date of effect has to be from February itself because this is when you are updating your EOI. And this is what changes. And then they, this could delay another month of getting an invitation. As we all know that the visas are also always expiring soon because you only get 18 months to lodge your expression to uh, of your graduate visa. Within these 18 months, you guys to undergo the job ready program, which again, instead of 12 months, have been taking much longer than this month. And then further, you lodge your expression of interest. You wait for the rounds. Your visas are about to expire. And in these circumstances, we get to know that EOIs were not done correctly or there were mistakes into those ones or the few very important factors which is required which on what basis the computer picks up and uh, gives you the invitation that has not been taken over and the hence they were not invited it is really really disheartening to say that so friends i urge you again if you are not sure about lodging an eoi or you are about to lodge an eoi or you have lodged your eoi you haven't received your invitations we ask you to check the details into the UI whether everything has been correctly entered or not. Also, when you go back and log in into your UI and you check whether the details have been entered correctly or not, you have to make sure that you if only do the changes which are necessary to do it. If you're making those changes, you're just logging on to it for no reasons, just making changes here and there, just out of the curiosity of the things. It changes the date of an EOI, which affects your invitation. So just don't do that just for the sake of going into an EOI and logging into it. And sometimes there are the changes which can be done after we have received an invitation also. So do not touch your EOI if that is not a mandatory uh, requirement for which for which the uh, invitation needs to be received. Okay. Now, um, uh, I pause it in here between and we will take first few questions of the state nominations and then we will, I ask you again, if you have got more questions, please write it in the inbox here and uh, we will take it up as the live session goes on. The first question is from Joey Liu. Hi, Joey. And uh, he is uh, in WS living here and he's... Uh, Current visa is the graduate visa 485. He has done the bachelor's qualification in Australia. And his query is that, hi, I'm waiting on WA invitation 190 on 90 points. The EOI is done in 9th of December, 2019. My intended occupation is a medical laboratory scientist. I would like to know if I'll get invited soon. Also in W, also is WA sending invitations based on the occupations as I've seen. Pharmacy technician with 85 points. Bachelors has been invited in January round. Okay. All right, Joey. So you basically have got two different questions. So I'll take the first question of yours where you said that you have lost your 
expression of interest for medical laboratory scientists at 90 points on 9th of December. Since 9th of December, there has been one round in January and uh, again, uh, according to me, you should have been invited. I, again, I ask you to look into your EOI if there's anything which is the mandatory information which is missing into your EOI could be one of the reasons that you have not been invited for this purpose because medical laboratory scientists, we receive those invitations even at 70 points because this is what the minimum required points for those ones are. So at the 70 also, lots of uh, uh, these ones has been invited. So I would advise you to double check into those ones. If everything is all good, we wish you luck and we hope that you receive the invitation within this month, which is going to be Thursday, next Thursday. All right. Now, his second question is that WA is sending invitations based on an occupation. He has seen the pharmacy technician with 85 points. Bachelor has been invited in January round. Yes, that's correct. The bachelor's pharmacy technicians has been invited and not only at 85 points, even below the 85 points also. We have seen that the bachelor, that uh, anyone who has received the skills assessment on the grounds of the pharmacy technician has been uh, invited because pharmacy technician is not a IQF level 6 occupation it is below that level also so even if you have done a diploma you could be eligible for that occupation so it is just not on the grounds of a bachelor's itself all right so i hope my answer answers all your uh, <laughs> queries and the next is from mini aurora and uh, she is she is a resident of Canada and she's interesting in migrating to Australia. She has got a three years of an experience in computer networks and systems engineer. She is planning to take NATI and as well as this year in Melbourne. She has, she has got eight each in English and any chances of receiving invitations for 190 WF. All right, Minnie, looks like you are currently not in Western Australia and you have not studied in Western Australia. And so, so the Western Australia state nomination, it is, it is must required that you must have studied within WA, okay? If you have not studied in Western Australia for two years, irrespective that your occupation is on the list, you will not be invited, even if you lodge your expression of interest. Because there are two kinds of streams for which WA invites you. One is the general stream, another one is the graduate stream. Your occupation, which you are mentioning, which is CNSA, is under the graduate stream. For, and to be eligible for the graduate stream, you must have studied in WA. In general stream, unfortunately, you don't, your occupation is not there. So keep an eye on that one. If you find your occupation in the general stream, if it comes back ever, then you would be eligible because the general stream requirement is offshore experience for three years, which you have, the English, the skills assessment, everything else you meet. It's just that your occupation is unfortunately not in this list. Since you are offshore and you have not been to Australia yet, you could be eligible for the other states under the same criteria and uh, under the offshore uh, qualification, sorry, off offshore requirements. So have a look on the other states also. If you want further inquiries for this one, kindly send your resume to us and I would look into all the options for the other states for you. Right now, it's because I'm talking about the WA, I don't want to distract others from this one. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you for your query, Mini. Now the next one is from Shubham Patel. And Shubham's query is that he has done Diploma of Hospitality Management from Western Australia. He has applied for the WA round for 70 points and he has done a job ready program. He has got seven each in English as well as he has got the partner points also. May I please know how long I have to wait for an invitation? Shubham, at 70 points for 190, we would say there would be a bit of a wait because we have been, the invitations that we have received in the last two rounds has been at 85 points for 190. So with 70 points, looks like there would be a bit of a wait for this one. And uh, I don't know when your visa is expiring. It is 
until the November 2021. So you can wait for your invitation also because you are not in a hurry for this one. However, uh, if you lodge your expression of interest for 491, you should receive the invitation within a one or the two rounds because for 490, you would be sitting at 80 points and uh, the invitations that we are receiving for 490 is 491, sorry, is at uh, 70 points that we have received at the minimum points. So hang on there if you really just only wanted a 190, otherwise you can lodge your expression of interest for 491 also. And uh, the next one is from Sharmib Acharya and uh, he has done Master of Engineering from Western Australia and that engineering is from telecom and the networks from Curtin University. The bachelor's is into electronics and communication engineering. He's working into the field of IT since October 2018. Can I apply through IT as it's difficult to get engineering job here? Shamib, you have got two, two requirements. You have got basically two options to go ahead with. You can get your skills assessment done from Engineers Australia on the grounds of your master's in engineering. And uh, if you do that, then you have to look for the job offer letter based on to these grounds only. Your second requirement is that uh, second option is you can go through the ACS also for the skills assessment based on your electronics and communication engineering. We have seen people because the requirement of the ACS skills assessment is that you must have the, done the bachelor's degree with the major in IT. People think that uh, the communication and uh, electronics and communication is not major in IT. However, communication is highly relevant to computer networks and systems engineer. You said that you have been working as an IT support in a bank since 2018. I really need to look into your uh, um, the job profile that what it is. If your job profile is uh, highly relevant to the computer networks and systems engineer, then I guess you are there. You have met all the requirements and you can go ahead with the WS state nomination. But job requirements are very important. We have also, I wanted to tell, <coughs> sorry, to all my friends here that ACS skills assessment is really, really very strict on their guard guidelines at this point of time. Until three months or four months ago, when their new guidelines have not came, we had always been saying the easiest assessment body is ACS. Right now, we just say the strictest assessment body is ACS. Your one word here and there in any of the document, and they will send you that it is an insufficient documentation and ask you to go either through a review or go again. And it is just that additional cost we are incurring. In the end, we do get the positive outcomes also, but they are very strict on the guidelines at this point of time. So if you're not sure, if you are not sure whether you are you are meeting the ENSCO guidelines or not, you have got a proper documentation or not, your documentation has got each and every word, what is required as per the guidelines is there or not, then please do not apply by yourself and take the professional help. Okay. Okay, so Sharmib, again, I just tell you, you can either go through the Engineers Australia and get the job offer on the grounds of this one, or you can go for ACS skills assessment, depending upon if your duties have been of a computer networks and system engineer. If it is not, then it will be considered as an ICT minor, and you would need additional years of an experience to meet the, quali to meet the requirements. Okay, and the next query is from Ken Lo, and uh, he has done he the uh, Bachelor's of Applied Science from in the construction management, and have got the skills assessment from AIQS. I guess that should be the surveyor skills assessment, and the query is can a contract administrator include in work experience? All right, so Ken. Your query is not really very into the brief that what do you mean by can be included in the work experience, but I guess you are saying that you have got a skills assessment of a surveyor and can your contract administrator work be used as a six months for this WA state requirements or not. Now again, the WA state requirement has got the similar, they have to follow the same ENSCO guidelines what the Department of Immigration follows. So the contract contract administrator work, if it is not high, not as per the ENSCO skill level that you then you should not be mentioning in your 
skills in, in expression of interest to meet the skills six months of a work experience required for WS state nomination. If it is only mention it in your EOI, if it is highly relevant to the end score of your skill nominated occupation, which I guess is a surveyor. And uh, there is a thin line difference between these two both because there's a level of a difference also. So if you could tweet it according to your surveyor, then yes. If you can't, then you cannot. Okay. Now, next question is from Tashi. And Tashi is currently a holder of a graduate visa. He has done advanced diploma in civil construction design. And he has got the skills assessment and has got the required English score also. And he wants to know regarding the job offer letter. Will the conditional job offer letter works or will need full time letter? Please clarify me. Tashi, with the conditional letter, I wanted to know what condition are you mentioning about it? Is that conditional that uh, you have got part time work hours and it will be you will will be getting full time work hours in future? That's fine because if it says your conditional letter is if it's saying that upon grant of the visa, these things will come into an effect, whatever is the requirement of the WS state nomination, that's fine. You do not have to be having everything as of on the date today. Like what I mean to say is that let's say for example, you're currently working part time or you're not working over there and uh, your employer gives a conditional letter and it says that upon grant of the visa, this letter of offer will come into an effect, then it's fine. Or upon grant of the visa, he will be given 35 hours of a week and until then it will be just 20 hours a week. That's again fine. So conditional offer letter which comes into the future is accepted by the WA state government. So these are the questions which I just downloaded before coming into this one. And I guess we have got more questions which I've got my friend Anna. She's behind the camera so you won't be able to see her but we'll hear her voice. Hi, thank you Preeti. I've got some uh, questions um, on the comment section. Uh, first one is from Joseph. Uh, how much is wait time for 491 at the moment from pre-invite? Pre-invite, okay. Joseph, so I did not understand what you mean by pre-invite. So it is the invitation you wanted to know that uh, at what points and how long does it take to the get the invitation or you wanted to know that once you have received the invitation how long does it take to get the 491 visa grant so I'll give you the answer of both because I'm not sure about your question so depending upon your points if you have got about 70 points then 491 is being you are invited at the 491 visa which is not an issue at the moment and if you're talking about what is the grant time for the 491 visa after the invitation sorry after the invitation has been accepted then it takes about uh, no more than three to four months that's a maximum time frame because the department of home affairs has said they are going to prioritize 491 and 494 which are the provisional visas because they understand once the visa has been granted the applicant needs to stay in a regional area for three years and if they take so long in processing the applications, the stay in the regional area also extends to up to that point of time. So if you are applying for a 491 or a 494 visa, they, it will, they will be prioritizing those applications and you will be getting the grants sooner than the 189 or the 190 visas. Um, next one is from Shiva Subedi. Mm -hmm. I have applied 190 at 75 points as chef. Is there any chance of getting invite soon? Okay. As I just said that in the last two rounds, the 190 visas has only been invited at 85. So I suspect in this round, it may come down to 80 because there will not be many people sitting at the 85. You have got high chances of receiving an invitation in the next round if you, re if you lodge your expression of interest for 491. At 75 points, there would be a bit of a wait to get the invitation as per my predictions. But... I wish you luck that if you receive it in within the next round, but looks harder. Yeah. Um, next one is from Robin. How much minimum points is needed for visa 189? He has not mentioned his occupation. All right. So, sorry, what's his name? Robin. Robin. Robin, uh, this is a bit, uh, a bit of a vague question, so I'll just answer it also accordingly. 
For 189, the minimum points uh, is about between 90 and 95, depending upon an occupation. If it's a non prorata application, then the 90 points are enough. And if it is a prorata, prorata occupation, then 95 points are expected for this one. And the wait of invitation round is about three to four months at the, at the required uh, points. Um, next question is from Karen. Bettis's result came positive with six months deemed skill, skilled as chemist abroad and has now a full-time job as QA food tech. Mm -hmm. Can these two qualifications be used for 190? All right, so as long as they are highly relevant to each other, yeah, this can be uh, considered as. If the vet says has deemed your experience and rest of the experience left is for six months, you can even use those ones. Also, I want to imitate about the new policy which the Department of Immigration has updated since the post the changes of November, where they have said on case by case basis, if your points have been deemed, they can still be considered for the skilled employment so I would say, uh, I would highly advise you to come and see me along with all your uh, letters and everything. I would see whether the the points which has been deemed by WetSS or the experience which has been deemed by WetSS, can we claim that in your EOI or not? Is it safer to do that or not? And if we can do that, then there is no issues with you for your six months of inexperience or anything. Um, Eric Ketter is saying, asking any information regarding registered nurses. Uh, he has got 90 points for 491 and 80 points for 190. And which registered nurse did they write? Any specialization? Uh, Eric has not mentioned. And has he done the bachelor's or the <laughs> master's? No information? No, no. Okay. Eric, uh, unfortunately, the, in the graduate stream, there has uh, the list has been removed and it was really really shocking for all of us because we were not expecting this occupation to be removed from the list however they have mentioned the same occupations which have removed from the graduate list into the general stream where you need at least either one year of an australian experience australian does not mean has to be in wa can be any australian experience ex uh, sorry experience australian experience from any state or three years of an offshore experience, which must be mentioned in your skills assessment. And also there are the specializations for those ones. The nurses have are also been open in the Victoria. So if you have done bachelors of nursing or masters of nursing, this is not on the grounds of your RN program or something then, and you have done these two studies within the last two years, then you are eligible for that uh, number 90 visa for victoria also which will need a job offer letter in addition to that if you have just got a skills assessment on the basis of the grounds of uh, the iron program or the bridging program then you are eligible for the uh, 491 visa in victoria again you would need a job offer letter into those grounds itself so look into those ones and we wish you luck also i want to say that uh, we have been in touch with the WA state government a lot and it's a back and forth going on to add few more or very important occupations into this, into this list. They have listened to us and our hard work has been paid that this morning one of the occupations which we have been insisting them has come back on the list which is the retail pharmacist. So I must say we should back the back, back, the back of all the migration agents which has helped us in putting the review about this and rest of the occupations which we have requested to come back on the list they are still under the review and uh, it uh, the thought process have been going behind this one so hang on if your occupations are not there uh, we are really really working hard with wa to bring those lists back onto that one um thais is basically asking the same question what's the situation for registered nurses co considering the latest news says registered nurse occupation is under review and invitations will be limited yeah so yeah. look again we have said that uh, we have been talking to wa regarding these ones for the registered nurses if you have done bachelor's or master's you can even think of getting the job offer letters from the victoria just uh, put your jobs over there go look into the seek the career ones or the agencies because if you have got a job offer 
irrespective whether it's in the aged care or is it in hospital or is it at the community nurses homes or anywhere as long as it's in registered nurse work you should be fine for your w oh, sorry for your victoria state nomination as of with the wa we are in talking terms of when we are we are having a lots of these things because it was a great shocking news for all of us where suddenly without any prior information these things have been reviewed and um the next question is from sawan golan um, he's asking cafe and restaurant manager 70 points for 190 and 80 points for 491 mm -hmm. When should I expect invitation and is there any chance of getting 190 with 70 points? And if not, how many points is needed for 190? EOI was lodged on 24th of January 2020 and when will be the next invitation round and he has again sent another question mm -hmm. saying and as the skills assessment was already done for one year of experience as manager so do i still need six months contract or experience something later on okay what's his name sawan okay sawan thank you for your query and it is a really detailed one so i'll take your questions one by one firstly at 70 points, we haven't received any invitation for 190 for a, a cafe or a restaurant manager. And uh, for 80 points, you have got a lot of chances that you can get invited in this round for a 491 visa. At 70 points for, the, at, for 190, it looks like a wait for you. Secondly, uh, you know, as I mentioned, that if you are claiming the six months of an experience, for your skilled occupation, then it should be mentioned in your EOI. Now you have got one year of an experience which is deemed by WA, by OETSS. That means you cannot claim the points for those ones. If you mention that in your EOI and you do not claim the points for this one, this is not considered as a skilled employment. And then the six months of an experience will not be considered by the WA. And on the other hand, if you mention that in your EOI and you claim it as your skilled employment and you claim those points, you will be okay with the state government, but then you will have an issue with the, state, with the Department of Home Affairs on the grounds of you have claimed the five points for an experience which were deemed by wet assess. Now, the new policy has come into an effect which says that on case by case basis, not everyone just like that, that you just say, oh, mine was deemed, I can still claim the points. We don't say that. On case by case basis, if your experience has been deemed, cannot be considered, can uh, should not be considered for uh, the employment points. Only very few cases could be done where we look into the in-depth of the experience that you have undertaken and the in-depth of what studies have you undergone. So based on these ones only. So I would highly recommend, like I said, I recommended the other girl also to come and see me so that we can see whether your deemed points, be deemed experience, should you be claiming the points in your EOI or not. Because if you are not claiming those points, then you go back to WA without the job offer on the basis of six months of an experience, it will be declined because it's not mentioned in your EOI. But if you go back and take it, on, and take those points and department can make a fuss about it. So very careful with this one. Um, he also asked if not 70 points, then how many points for 190? Okay, the, the latest to the trade occupations we have received 190 is for 85 in the last two rounds. Currently in this round, I'm expecting it's 80 or maybe 75 in a couple of rounds, 70 would be a bit of a wait. Okay, mm -hmm. Isabel uh, Hiti, uh, if we have family here is better we go for 491 family sponsored rather than 491 state sponsored. Any, sorry, okay. um, any chance of aiming for 190 for AA at 85 points for civil and structural dra draft person? Hi Isabel, I think I know you. All right, and uh, okay. Firstly, for your uh, skills assessment, sorry, for your 491 visa, if we are going with the, on the base, on the grounds of the relative sponsor, the points required are very high. The required points are 90, 90 or 95, okay? Then second is that if you go with the 491 state sponsorship, 
the required points are 70 at the 70 points including the 15 points from the relative it is there so you can see what may how many points you are sitting up for if you go with the wa state nomination then it is a two two stage criteria where you have to accept the state nomination first provide them the job offer letter and then go with the uh, then you receive the department of home affairs however for the relative sponsored you do not have to go through the state the employments will come through, sorry, the invitations will come through your state government, uh, so, uh, Department of Home Affairs directly. So, and but there will be a bit of a wait for an invitation because the last invitations that we have received is for the ones who have lodged their EOI in December for at the 90 points for 491 invitations for the relative sponsored. So, you can gauge these ones. How early do you need your uh, invitation if you are if you need it very quickly and early then basically going through the state is a quicker process as compared to the Department of Home Affairs in any case I would advise you once you receive your full skills assessment you must lodge both the expression of interest and see which one do you receive first because the assessment for both of these ones is exactly the same uh, uh, and the any changes between these uh, these two is the 15 points that you are claiming either from the state or from the relative that's the additional requirements which are the different requirements you have to meet and accordingly you could decide for this one um, next question is from miriam hi i'm a registered nurse with positive skills assessment rn medical uh, i am done with bachelor's of science nursing in australia and currently pursuing masters of nursing mm -hmm. i have seven years of registered nurse overseas experience uh, she is asking for 190 and she is also currently working as a clinical assistant as uh, Australian registered nurse. Mm -hmm. uh, should, uh, should I finish master's first before applying for PR? Mm -hmm. Planning to do skills assessment with NMAC this month. Mm -hmm. um, and what are the chances of getting invited for visa 190? How long does it take to be granted? Oh. And she's currently sitting at 80 points. Right. So her bachelor's has she done from Western Australia or from in Australia? Australia. Uh, she just said Did in Australia. Australia. So. Okay. okay. I don't know if you have done your bachelor's from here itself or not. If you haven't done your bachelor's from here, then you should look forward in finishing your master's degree. And once you finish your master's degree in nursing, you would be eligible for 189 visa. 190 visa as well as the 491 visa 190 visa you will be eligible for both the states western australia as well as victoria because for victoria if you have finished your studies within the last two years then the registered nurse or the medical they both are in their list and you could be invited on those both both of these grounds your experience on the grounds of the six years what you have you should get that assessed from ANMAC as an employment assessment also although the employment assessment in ANMAC is not a compulsory one it is the additional one but you should be going through those ones because if you go with the, any of the state government and you claim those points without having the, in the outcome letter of your skills assessment they will not be considering those points for that she did it from wa her bachelor's okay if you have done it from wa then you should you must lodge your expression of interest now why you have to wait for this one and f under the graduate stream uh, you are eligible but graduate stream we do not have the list so under the general stream again you are eligible because you have got a six months of an experience eoi must be lodged for this one not sure how long ago have you to finish your bachelor's if that's finished within the last two years you are eligible for the 190 um, victoria also for the state nomination and that is just an application which would need a job offer later from there so come and see me looks like you have got quite a few options and i can tell you because right now just over the place you know over the session i won't be able to give you every detailed information about it um, next question is from Navdeep Kirti. I have completed my diploma of IT in Perth for one year and after that I moved to Victoria and complete my graduation. And my question is that if I come to WA and do my diploma of business, am I eligible to apply 491 visa in WA with my skills assessment in IT? Okay. Uh, Kirti, right? 
नवदीप की थी हाई नवदीप थैंक्स फॉर योर क्वेश्चन सो Yes, the WA requirement is that you must have done two years of a study from WA. As you mentioned, that you have only done one year of a study, and rest of the study was done from an, any another state. You can come back here definitely finish your rest of the study because the study can be accumulative or consecutive and any time within. So it is not something that within last five years the study should have been undertaken or ten or what can be accumulative, consecutive, any time frame. You will become eligible. the study does not has to be in the uh, relevant field of your skills occupation so if you have if even if you done a diploma of uh, management leadership or whatever you wanted to study you do that and your uh, uh, occupation is into the it but your study is not into it you will still be eligible because this is there's no such requirement that your study needs to be in the nominated occupation hope this answer helps um next question is from sanjay subedi what about social work without experience with 75 points oh he's asking for south australia okay for the south australia state nomination if your occupation is uh, uh, the in under the supplementary list you have to meet the requirements of uh, of the work there without work experience it cannot be conceded so the study has been done from south australia is it he hasn't that hasn't mentioned but if you have done your study from wa no work experience is required all you need is a skills assessment and then job offer could work for you um question from monica dua if family is not living in regional area if they move to regional area so i can apply straight away or they have to live 2 years okay uh monica the, there's a requirement that your uh, relatives must be a usually resident of a regional area and the usually resident we generally say we take it about 18 months of a residency in the designated area um aaron is asking hi uh, i have 75 points for computer network and system engineering with 3 years of new south wales experience do i have chance to get 190 so you can come back again he has got 3 years of new south wales experience mm -hmm. Do and I have chance to get one night? And where is he currently residing? Uh, he is. He has not he has mentioned. mentioned. Okay. No. Aaron, uh, for the New South Wales one ninety visa, it is on the grounds of the merits. Okay, so the merits is that definitely they look into the points. Other than that, if you have got the similar points with the other applicants have, then you must be living and working in New South Wales in your current current occupation. If that is so. then you do have got high chances of receiving an invitation from new south wales that's again being done every month um ramya saru hi what is the processing time for wa nomination after we submitted the required documents it it says 28 working days but they are taking a bit longer than this one because they said they have got a backlog at this point of time um narinder bali Hi I have applied for invitation for 491 as a chef with 75 include state sponsor points how long it take to get invitation as I have applied from December 2019 you should have received the invitation for 491 for a 491 because we did receive invitations for the ones in January where we lodged the EOI also in January with 70 points you said you have got 75 points so Double check your UI. Make sure you have mentioned everything which is the required ones. If you're not sure, come and see us. Um, you should have received the invitation by now. Okay. Next one is from Bala Sharma. Any option for overseas registered nurse with two years of overseas experience in South Australia? I have only done bridging course in Australia. Do I need any kind of university degree? If yes, then one year or two years. And what about the experience? You need two years of a degree to be eligible for the WA state nomination. You need to have a one year of a degree to be eligible for uh, one year of a study to be eligible for the South Australia. But you need, in addition to that, you would need the South Australian experience also. And this is as of date to die, right? Other states also have got their own requirements. So come and see me, see us, or send your resume, and we will let you know about the other states for all those requirements because it's about the WA. I'm talking more about it. 
Sonam Doji is asking. I was on temporary leave for two years from my job but paid full salary. Engineers Australia considered those two years as full-time employment. Do you think Department of Home Affairs will consider it as full employment? It was, as you said, it was a paid employment, but uh, were you in Australia and you have got the paid employment from overseas, then you have to show that you have done the work also for this one. And if it's just the paid leave on the grounds of, because once you come back from there, they pay you some, some, amount, of, uh, some amount of money for your allowances and everything, we would not recommend you to claim those ones because it will be so contradicting if you are in Australia, but you were being paid from your back home country for those the, that for period of time. For Ingenious Australia, I know they, they might have received and they have given you those ones because they do not have your movement records. They don't know where you were at that point of time, but department has. Nitin Tom is asking, uh, any chance for 190 invitation for electrical engineering draft person with 75 points? Yes, Nitin, definitely. All those uh, um, in the last previous rounds we have received at 75 points. So depending upon what you're studying to, if you have done only an advanced diploma in Western Australia and you do not have any studies from the back home, then there could be a wait of another one or two months. But if you have got, let's say you've got a bachelor study as a highest qualification and here you have done diploma, advanced diploma, have got 75 points, you should get invitation. Okay, Preeti, Larissa Nguyen has sent a very long question. So bear with me when I read it. Uh, Larissa says, if I do internship during Master of Professional Engineering, will that be counted as experience in skills assessment when I apply for 491? Uh, or 190 in WA. Um, do you want to answer okay. that first? Yeah. I'll All right. Uh, the internship experiences can only be considered if they are the post qualification. So if your bachelor's is into the same qualification and the end score requirement of the skills assessment is the bachelor's study, then it, the, then your experience as an internship can be counted, provided it's a paid experience at the for 20 hours per week and the pay level is not just of a trainee it is at the full pay level full in the sense that yeah what is the minimum required wages for that occupation at this point of time um she's also asking what is the point of chemical engineering in wa to be invited for 491 190 now 190 and 491 they both have been invited at 70 and above so engineers do not have to meet the very high points it's the trade qualifications which has to meet the high points for a 190 visas can i stay in perth when i apply for 491 190 then move to regional after my visa is granted perth is a regional area you do not have to move anywhere so once your visas are granted you can live in uh, wa sorry in perth as a regional area or the requirement of the 491 visa is to live in any regional area so if you have received the visa from wa you wanted to move to any other regional area you are more than welcome to do that you do not have to move from perth to another regional area just for the sake of the visa it is your wish and she last question i study in uwa for five years will i still need ielts or pte when i apply for skills assessment which skills assessment is it aitsl talking about for chemical engineering for chemical engineering yeah chemical no you do not for the skills assessment purposes if you have studied for more than two years then you do not need the skill the um, skill, uh, skills assessment sorry the english for a skills assessment but that will be required for your graduate visa that will be required for your um, ui for your state application and everything you are only exempted by engineers australia on the grounds of two years of your master's study not by anybody else Okay. Um, Kavini has sent two separate questions, I think three separate questions. Um, he's asking, hi, I'm planning to apply for 491 family sponsored visa from WA. What is the IELTS requirement to get the invitation or visa? Um, IELTS, depending upon how many points do you have from the other factors, but the 491 relative sponsored has been invited at 90 points. If it's a prorat application, 85 or 90 points, depending upon your occupation. Um, I am planning, oh, it's actually the same question, and okay, it's, it was actually the same question. <laughs> okay, another one is from Viren Kamboj. 
85 points enough to get 190 WA? He has not mentioned, mentioned anything any, else. Yeah, but it uh, looks like any occupation, 85, 190 is enough, in whether it's a trade or whether it is the professional qualification. Um, Wakas Malik, when is the next WA invitation round? Invitation rounds for WA is always the third Friday of the month and it's always in the end of the day but we have seen lately they do get late in giving the invitations and they sometimes give it on the Friday morning so third Friday or for third Friday uh, sorry third Th Thursday <laughs> Thursday or the Friday of the month. Uh, Aditya Oh, Viren Kamboj, who asked for 85 points enough to get 190, he's saying it's for Chef. Chef, yes, you should be able to get this one. And uh, we did receive the invitations last month for the 85, so you should receive it within this month. Good luck. Uh, Aditya, he's saying, I have done my master's, got my skills assessment from ACS, filed my EOI for 190 last week, 11th of February 2020. I have 85 points for 190 with one year of experience. What is the chance of me getting invited in next week, February round? He His occupation is ICT security specialist. Good luck. You should be receiving it. Mm. Viren is again asking, <laughs> say, Chef, 85 points for 190. How long waiting time? You should receive it within this round. Within this round. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He said, thank you. <laughs> all right, thank you. Okay, okay, that was, so far that's it. Okay. That's all the questions we have. Thank you so much for all your questions. I really love the way you guys go into the depth of this one and listen to me and come back to us for this one. My, again, I reiterate, so your EOI is the basis of everything. As you have seen, so many people have been writing that I have been, I've lost my EOI in December. I haven't received mine. However, in January also, I lost the EOIs and have received the invitations for those ones. So this means your EOI is not being done in a way what WA is looking into to give you an invitation. That is the most important thing. As I generally say to my friends, you can only get the lottery ticket or you can win a lottery if you buy the lottery ticket, which is the right one. So EOI is basically a kind of a lottery which should be done very right with the, with all the correct information which is required. And if there's any incorrect information and you got invited, again, you are stuck. You put it, the mistakes in the UI, you don't get invited, you are stuck, you're wasting your time. So we professionals are here. If you're not happy, if you're not there, you don't know whether it is correct or not, you're doubtful about it, please come and see us. I'm more than happy to look at your UIs and take you further from there. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Thank you.